Hey everyone, this is Royal with Paternity University. Uh, this is this is a fun one. I'm very excited about doing this presentation uh, because I want to talk about strategy. For the past three years, I've mainly been talking about how to start, how to you know what labs to use, uh, how to sell stuff like that. But this time, you know, as as you know, some of us paternity testing business owners, some of my colleagues people who used to be students who are now my peers are entering their second, even third year of business. And so we want to get a little bit more refinement. And with that, there's strategy involved. So this presentation is going to go into that. Without further ado, here we go. So what's a strategy? What is a strategy? So, you know, you think of a business plan that's normally uh, what people start to work on as they start their business. Now, mind you, this is all in my experience. Of course, uh, a professor at Harvard Business School would would have a way better definition than I would. But this is just my experience, you know, as as a guy with the two point seven GPA graduated from college, right? <laughs> uh, this is just straight up experience. But what is a strategy? It's 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 more than a checklist. It's how you get to what you want to get to your desired outcome. Okay. And it's made up of the bullet points below. Um, I'm going to go into each of these bullet points. They're going to have their own slide and I'm going to talk about how you ultimately develop a strategy. So as you're, this is, you know, coming, we're coming into the end of 2024 in this video right now, it's November 26 It's a couple of days before Thanksgiving, 2024. And so we're going into 2025 and if you've been operating your business for a few months already, or if you just started your business, any business, whatever business it may be, uh, you want to go into 2025 with an actual strategy and not just a checklist of things to do. The strategy gets to a desired outcome. So here we go. So your vision statement is, you know, what you foresee your business doing, what you want your business to accomplish by the end of the year, what do you want? What is the overall overarching thing that you want to do? So as you can see the example right here, I want, you know, my DNA testing company or my notary business or whatever uh, to establish itself as legitimate DNA testing company in my city by the end of the year. Okay. So that is your overarching all in goal. What you want to accomplish by December 31st, 2025. Okay. And so how I work it is I come up with my themes, basically the pillars that hold up my vision statement. And this is next. So your themes are the things that uphold your vision state. Like I said, they're, they're, that's your foundation. That's your pillars right there. So certain things like customer service, uh, efficiency, et cetera, as you can see, these are the themes that, and you can define those themes in your own words. There may be different themes that you want to come up with, but what upholds your vision statement. If you want to be the best, if you want to be known as a reputable place, then reputation is a theme, right? Um, and so you want to write out a sentence of, of how, you know, what theme is going to uphold your vision statement. So I will communicate communication by doing this thing, proactively reaching out to my clients to update them on the status. So it's an action. I want this thing to uphold my vision statement by doing this action. And keeping that action or keeping this theme in mind all the time when I do my business, when I ultimately hire a virtual assistant to handle things, I need to be able to teach that virtual assistant or teach my daughter or teach my son these things, these values that uphold my vision statement. The next is your goals. So then from there, you write out a goal, some goals. It could be three goals. It can be five. It could be one. I would say at least three. Um, what do you want to do? Do you want to increase sales? Do you want to have more people know about you? Do you want to increase your, your, your market share? Do you want to specialize in a specific service? You know, do you want to reach an underutilized market? What do you want to do? And you want to make sure your goals are smart. So specific, measurable, uh, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So there's an example right below that says, I want to help or I want to sell uh, to 100 clients and I want to bring in this amount of revenue by December 31st. Okay. That is a specific goal. It's not just like, I want to make this amount of money. Okay. How? By, by doing what and by when specifically, I want to, um, 
okay, if you're in Houston, Texas, right? If you're in Phoenix, Arizona, um, a place like me, El Paso, Texas, there is a large Hispanic population. Um, and there is an underutilized market of people uh, uh, that speak only Spanish that still need services from a business. But sometimes some businesses don't tend to them. <laughs> it's an underutilized, it's an underrecognized market. So how will you, uh, you know, change up your DNA testing business or adjust it to be able to reach that market? You know, it should that that can be a goal of yours, and then your tactics would be next. So tactics is or or how you accomplish your goal. I like to call your tactics your soldiers, your little team of soldiers, a team of three little soldiers that have clear inputs and clear outputs outputs i'm sorry uh of 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 what what specific action will you take to do this okay so if your goal is i want to help 100 clients i want to bring in fifty thousand dollars in revenue the first tactic i will do is i will advertise you can using google ads minimum 500 bucks a month and i will also drop info packets at 20 lawyer offices a month okay that is specific measurable you know, actionable things that you're doing, real numbers, things that you can hold yourself accountable for, okay? I'm going to advertise with this. You know, you can even change your tactic to say, hey, after this quarter, I'm going to up my advertising some more, okay? Uh, after I get some after I get some, some, some revenue coming in. Uh, I'm going to increase the amount of info packets. I, I, I you know, you can, you can adjust your tactics uh, over time, but develop three tactics, another tactic. Think of another tactic of how you want to help 100 clients. How else can you do that? How else can you be known? How else can you put yourself out there? That's a tactic. Market data. So this is all stuff that feeds into your, your, your goals and your tactics, okay? So don't forget to continue researching your competition, all right? Um, look, at, look it up. You know, when you probably first started your DNA business and you bought the course, uh, or you just watched my YouTube and um, you... Um, you watch my YouTube videos and I talk about, you know, research and competition, do it again, do it again, do it again. What are, what are they, what are they offering? Did they adjust to you? Do they realize that you're around now and they adjust to you? They, did they drop their prices? Did they increase their, uh, your, their internet presence? Did they increase their social media. What do they do? All right, check them out. Keep, keep checking them out because one of your competitors is doing the same. One of your competitors is watching you. And if you're just laying around thinking everything's sweet, nope, you got to continue to build your moat. Historical data, very important stuff for strategy. Very, very critically important stuff for strategy. Okay. So if you've been if you've been doing this for longer than six months, uh, even three, three, four months, but I say six for DNA testing, you've got some data. If you if you've been doing this for a year, uh, two years, heading into your third year, you got a lot of historical data and you got experience and you want to get all that down. So what are your, some things like your conversion rates? How many calls does it take to get a sale? You know, look at a client. How many times did that client uh, call you to, for you to sell? Uh, was it once? Was it twice? Was it three times? What's your conversion rate? What's your average conversion rate? What are your average monthly revenues? How much are you bringing in? And then what months, if you've been doing this for some time, especially if you've been doing this for like a year and a half, two years, if you got two historical years under your belt, what months do you sell the most normally? What is it? Um, what is your what is your profit margin? You have to determine that. And then what tests sell the most? Um, you can determine what sells the most and you can continue to uh, put advertising specifically for that um, or push that or communicate that. that. That data enables you to determine what your strategy is going to be to further define your tactics. And then, you know, at the end of each quarter, um, I would say at the end of each quarter, you know, you could do it monthly, you could do it biweekly, but at the end, probably at the end of each month or quarter, you can, um, you know, do a, a planning and review session in the army. We call it them after action reviews or AARs. Any of my military people will know what I'm talking about. And so you want to look at like what happened, you know, um, what was supposed to happen, what happened, and then what are some um, sustains and improves? What are some things you can do better? You know, you also want to talk about what you're planning in review sessions, some new sales goals, some inputs desired out. What do you what do you want to do at the end of every quarter? Because you don't just want to set your strategy for 2025, 2026, 2027, and don't check in on it. You know, check in on it at the end of every quarter. Look at what you did. What happened? What didn't happen? How many calls did you get? 
How much did you actually advertise? What happened? And then how can you adjust from there? So uh, with this, um, I'm, I'm with, you know, with Paternity University, I'm, I'm going more into uh, strategy, into, into tactics, into things like that to um, systemize and legitimize your DNA testing business, okay? Because we, we're in the big leagues now. We want to start doing some bigger and better things. So uh, with that being said, at paternityuniversity.com, you can book a 30-minute strategic planning session with me um, where we will go over uh, your plan. Uh, we will go over uh, your tactics, any, anything of that nature, right, to help you plan. And then on the website also is the strategic strategic planning template and business-to-business -business spreadsheet. That is for $20 at this moment. Is a template that outlines everything that you need to know to begin to plan for your business in 2025. Okay, and, and beyond, of course, you continue to use this for years and years and years to come. So uh, that is available on fraternityuniversity.com. Thank you all so much for watching this presentation. I know it's, you know, you ain't seeing my face. It's all just uh, PowerPoint, but hey, it's a lot of good information that I think is going to help a lot of us. So thank you all so much. Until next time, peace.